Okay, so let's talk about uh, about the microbit and uh, the way you, you can hack this uh, tiny device. So I'm just to introduce myself, I'm Damien Coquille, head of uh, R&D at Ecolacom Digital Security. Sorry, this is uh, a French company. I'm also a senior security researcher, and, uh, and I'm also a software hardware reverse engineer. So I'm French. Expect uh, expect uh, errors and so on, but. Uh, I think you're, you're quite familiar with it. So we will talk about the uh, microbit. Microbit. Uh, uh, this is a tiny device with uh, um, many amazing features. Uh, I mean, many, uh, many interesting things from a hacker point of view. And I will introduce you to the uh, to a way to turn the microbit into a sniffer and uh, into um, some nice tools uh, in order to hack into uh, radio frequency protocols. And, uh, I'm going to show some demos too. So first of all, the BBC microbit. So this is a uh, BBC sponsored device that was uh, given to a lot of students in uh, the United Kingdom uh, in order to um, uh, to facilitate the uh, the learning of coding in uh, uh, UK schools. So basically, it has a, a five by five LED screen. Uh, LED matrix, two buttons, uh, a nice custom c expansion connector, and uh, also wireless capabilities. So it's uh, it, it's worth to be noted because uh, this is uh, the interesting part in the microbit, and all it's uh, it's running micro Python. So uh, you, if you want to code in Python on the microbit, this is possible. It costs only 15 bucks. Uh, I checked on Sparkfun, so if you want to buy one, it's uh, very cheap. From uh, uh, an advert perspective, this is a, uh, a device based on the uh, Nordic Semiconductors NRF 51A22. Oh, it's a bit weird, as a, uh, it's a bit one name, but it's a 2.4 uh, gigahertz GFSK demo uh, transceiver uh, along, that comes along with the CPU, so it's uh, pretty cool. It has uh, 256 kilobytes of flash, 16 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, you can use some pins uh, like uh, AD, uh, as ADCs. So if you want to uh, read digital, uh, some uh, read some voltages or, or so on, you, you can do it. Uh, it also has a, a SPI bus, a I2C bus, and uh, you can use uh, 20 GPIOs to do whatever you want with the expression port. It's powered in three volts, so it's uh, kind of cool. You can power it with uh, two uh, AAA batteries, so it's uh, very portable and affordable. It's also easy to program. This uh, device has been uh, designed to uh, fit the uh, children's needs. So uh, everything is online. You can use a, a JavaScript blocks editor, for instance, uh, developed by Microsoft. It's kind of scratch. Uh, you can use to program your microbit. You just put blocks uh, and develop on the microbit uh, by using this, uh, this editor. Or you can do it the Python way by uh, an online, uh, using an online editor. If you put, put some Python code in it, it compiles online and you get the next file. You have just to put, uh, to put this file on, uh, in your microbit. Uh, you know, this is a, an interesting device because if you plug it uh, through, the, uh, through the, a USB cable to your computer, it pops up at, as a mass storage device. So you just have to drag and drop your file and it flashes automatically your, your microbit. So this is, a, this is very cool. It also has a, a Ripple, a read evaluate print loop. So if you want to debug your code, you can just use, a, a, say, a minicom. And you can debug it through UART. So this is a this is nice to to um, when you are developing uh, some uh, some um, some code on the, on the microbit. And it also has uh, wireless capabilities. And this is uh, uh, the inter most interesting part. Uh, this uh, transceiver, the NRF 51.822, is able to communicate through legacy shock burst protocol. So this is a protocol designed by Nordic. Uh, and uh, also the Enhanced Shock Burst Protocol. This is uh, the new version of this protocol. And uh, last but not least, the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol. So the, this chip can uh, emulate devices. Can, you can put some service, Bluetooth Low Energy Services on it, create a uh, Bluetooth enabled device. So this is, uh, this is great. So when I discovered this, uh, this uh, capabilities, I, I was like, uh, you know, So it's interesting because it's, it, it, 
Oh, French, I said. It's uh, interesting because uh, the Anna Shock Bus Protocol is well known as it was presented last year by Mark Newlin uh, from Bastille. And uh, it was uh, covered, uh, it was attacked by uh, Mark Newlin during this uh, last DEF CON. And uh, it developed uh, what you call the, the MOSJAC framework. So the MOSJAC framework basically is a, t a set of tools able to hijack uh, wireless keyboards and mice. So it's a uh, so it can, it's a great tool. We don't need Python too, uh, and it's, uh, also, it's also open source, so uh, it's a good way. So um, it's good to know the, uh, the basics of this hack because uh, it's not Mark Newlin who found out how to turn this uh, device, which is a crazy radio PA here, uh, into a sniffer. All the credits go to Travis Goodspeed with uh, his uh, NRF24 L01 Plus hack. Uh, in this act, it managed to turn uh, an, another chip for a Nordic, uh, Nordic semiconductor, uh, which is the NRF24 LO1 Plus, into a sniffer by using a, a, a trick uh, I'm going to uh, talk about in, in, a, in a, another section of this presentation. But uh, it's, it's good to know. Uh, also, Sammy Kamkar made uh, this uh, key sweeper, which is a tiny device. Um, it's uh, just a, it's very small and uh, it looks like a, a power adapter, but inside you find a, an Arduino connected to an RF24 L1, so it's able to sniff wireless keyboards, and uh, it's also uh, using a, a GSM a gateway to send text and receive text, so you can get uh, the uh, intercepted stuff, intercepted keystrokes over uh, uh, wirelessly with your phone. Uh, another interesting tool for 2.4 GHz protocols is a DSMX hijacking tool called Icarus. So this one is a bit weird here, but uh, in fact, this is a, a tool uh, that uses uh, some kind of sniffing to hack into uh, the DSMX protocol. And what is DSMX protocol? It's a protocol used um, in a, uh, with model airplanes. So when you're just flying model airplanes, uh, you may use a, a controller and a receiver that uses this, this, this protocol. And they hack into this uh, protocol and we're able to, uh, to take complete control of, uh, say, uh, a plane or, or a quadcopter in this case. So after, uh, after, after having reading all of this, I, I was thinking about um, doing some kind of offensive Python on the microbit. You know, if I'm, it, it, maybe it's possible to turn this microbit into a sniffer, and hopefully it is, but uh, maybe we can do a lot more with this. So just have a look at it. So let's start digging into the microbit. And uh, I'm, go I'm going to start with the uh, NRF51822. Uh, specific uh, specifications, and especially the way uh, you can turn this uh, transceiver to a sniffer. So uh, I talked about uh, the uh, Travis Goodspeed hack. So this is how the uh, Travis Goodspeed hack works. So basically, you have a, a, a datagram sent over the air, and the transceiver tries to match some fields just to identify a valid packet. Your uh, packet starts with a preamble, which is uh, in this uh, in this example 55 in X, then followed by a, a three byte address. So the address can be uh, three, four, or five bytes uh, when you are dealing with the unknown shock bus protocol. And this address is followed by your packet control field, which is nine bit, then a payload, and uh, at the end a CLC. So th this is a this is the this is a basic setup for the uh, an ESB protocol. But what Travis Goodspeed discovered is that the matching uh, when the transceiver tries to identify the start of a packet, it does not rely on uh, the preamble byte. It it performs the, the matching of the uh, on the address. So if you configure the, your NRF24 L1. Uh, in a weird way, there is a possibility to sniff. I mean, uh, since the matching is performed on the address, if we set up uh, the transceiver to match a two byte long address rather than the three, four, or five bytes, and if we put a, a 0055 in X as an address, it will match the preamble of the packet. So, 
Uh, we also configure this uh, transceiver to forget about the PCF field. So we go back to the legacy uh, shock bus protocol and we tell the transceiver that we need uh, 32 bytes of payload. So in the payload, we will find the, uh, the ESB address, which is here, uh, three bytes, the nine bits of the PCF field, the original payload, and also a CRC. In order for the, this packet to be notified uh, to, the, to, the, to our code, we need to disable the CRC. Um, why? Because if the CRC is enabled, uh, the matching algorithm will, che will check the CRC, and uh, in this configuration, the CRC does not match. So once you configure your transceiver this way, you are able to sniff. So this is for the 24L01 plus, not for the 51A22. But basically, they did the same mistake on the 51A22. So if you just tweak a bit the configuration of the 51A22, you can get the exact same effect. There are some differences between the 24L01 plus and the 51A22. So basically, the 51 is able to do uh, both uh, big endian and little endian values, where the uh, NF24L01 just uh, sticks with the big endian. And also, the uh, NF51A22, uh, that's uh, very difficult to say, sorry, uh, as a, a payload, uh, with a max uh, 254 bytes instead of the 32 bytes we got with the uh, 24L01 plus. So it's very cool because uh, we were limited with the 24L01, but the limitation is no longer here with the 51. But the configuration is a bit, uh, a bit more complex. So here we are how, it do, uh, how it is done. Um, I put all this on the code. So you have a base zero and prefix zero uh, registers. You have to put uh, some zero in it and 55, just to be sure to match the, the preamble. Uh, we configure the PCF field to be zero, to, to just a uh, uh, useless field here. here. And uh, also we set up the Indian S to big with uh, some kind of value, and we set up the maximum payload length to 40. Y40, just to be able to, keep, to catch the 32 bytes payload uh, we would have missed if we were using uh, the NRF 24L01. Once you set up your 51 and 822 like this, you will get some packets in it because uh, it matches the, the preamble, but we have to check the CRC ourselves because uh, this is not performed by the transceiver. So by doing this and um, by using some code from uh, NRF Research Firmware, which is a firmware used uh, for the MassJack Mass uh, tool, we can uh, check the CRC and uh, um, just uh, avoid um, all false positives from this. So I put all of this into a modified MicroPython firmware I've wrote. I will be... Uh, I will release this uh, at the end of this talk. Uh, so, uh, and, and modify the micro and Python uh, radio module just to, uh, to implement some uh, new, new features such as this, uh, sniffing, uh, this, this uh, sniffing trick. And by using some, uh, some lines of Python, I was able to develop a quick ESB sniffer. So I got a, a little demo to show you how it works. So uh, first of all, I, will, I am programming my microbit with my specific firmware. Uh, and uh, uh, I tell the microbit to use a specific Python file I wrote, so this is a, the, the file I showed you uh, just before. And by connecting to the UART uh, with a specific baud rate, uh, I, I am getting all the stuff printed by the microbit. So here you can see uh, many devices talking with uh, uh, over the, some kind of ESB protocol. So this is a Logitech uh, wireless mouse and it's uh, sniffed without any problem by this, uh, this little hack. So, here it is. But we are not limited to uh, ESB, pro um, uh, ESB protocol or SB protocol. Uh, as uh, it's a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transceiver, we can do a lot of stuff. We can do uh, sniffing, we also can inject information into this protocol. And this technique is not limited to ESB, so we can uh, hack into any 2.4 gigahertz uh, protocol that relies on a JFSK modulation uh, with a specific data rate. So there is a whole new world of possibilities. 
And then, um, as a, a field worker, I uh, obviously own some kind of quadcopter. Uh, and uh, I decided to put some, uh, some support for the XN 297 transceiver, which is uh, found in the Cherson CX10. I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, quadcopter, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite, quite a common. So, um, but the transceiver is not common. Uh, this is compatible with our uh, NRF 51822. Um, but there is a, a slight difference, uh, that is this uh, transceiver use, uses a, a data whitening algorithm. So anyway, uh, it's not a, a big deal. So uh, I develop a, a lot of uh, some, f some methods for the radio model to, uh, to keep it, uh, to, to be able to communicate with the XN287. So if you use um, the custom preamble used by this one server, uh, which is uh, 671 OF55, uh, as a receiver and transmitter address, you can communicate with this device without no problem at all. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty easy to, to, in to implement in the, uh, in the micro bit. Although the uh, NRF51822 is, is Bluetooth smart capable. So I, I was wondering if uh, there were uh, some kind of possibilities to sniff uh, uh, some Bluetooth smart traffic. Um, and this is possible. And just as a reminder uh, for those here that don't, do not know uh, where the Bluetooth low energy protocol. Uh, the BAD protocol uses three channels to advertise uh, devices. Uh, that is the 37, 38, and 39 channels. Uh, the, these channels are spread over, along the, the, the whole band, 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, so this is uh, just a, as a reminder. And uh, every device uh, that uh, performs this uh, uh, advertising stuff uh, has to send uh, specific packets to a specific access address. This is a four byte address used at a preamble just to match, uh, to, to identify uh, unique links. And in this, uh, in this packet, you will find some kind of PDU. And this is a PDU that tells uh, BED stack what's it all about. So here uh, we are looking for advertisement. And I also put all this, all of this in the, my modified microbit firmware, uh, MicroPython. So uh, I wrote a, um, a quick BLE advertisement sniffer uh, using the using Python, and I ran it yesterday or this night at the hotel. So it's uh, there were a lot, a lot of devices advertising themselves on. This is a this this is a quite normal. But we can also spoof advertise, uh, advertisement packets. So if we build uh, from scratch a packet, we can create a DEF CON 25 device and advertise this device. But um, furthermore, we can do some fuzzing on the PDU parsers used in uh, many BLE stacks. So I decided to modify uh, uh, just a byte, uh, the first one uh, uh, before the DEF CON 25 uh, string, which uh, normally is uh, 09. But I put a OA, uh, so just a, a value of plus one instead of a nine, and I uh, advertised this uh, this device, and I used my laptop uh, with uh, uh, my integrated BLE adapter just to to detect the devices that were around. Um, if you if you look carefully, you can see that uh, even um, I sent a, a malformed PDU, but my stack got it, and I get uh, one more character at the end of different 25 because it uh, it, uh, it thought that uh, it was a, a 10 bytes long string rather uh, than a nine bytes. So can be also useful to test some kind of this stuff on uh, on uh, Bluetooth. Furthermore, we can sniff uh, we can try to sniff BAD connections. So if you want to make a, a 15 uh, bucks uh, BLD sniffer, well, maybe it's the way. So I tested this. Uh, I tried to sniff a BLD connection request. Um, that's uh, the BLD connection request is a, a specific packet sent by a device uh, uh, that wants to connect to a specific uh, other device, BLD device, uh, to tell the, to, to provide this, this device with all the requested parameters. And uh, we can sniff this, uh, this connection request. So I did this uh, again with a, a, a BLD device I own. So uh, everything is on, is on a micro bit uh, still. 
So it takes some time to get the uh, the connection request because uh, because uh, since the device advertises itself on three channels, you get to to be on the what channel when the connection request arrives. Just waiting. Okay, we got the first one. So uh, here we got the access address, which is a four byte address identifying the link, and the initiator, adv uh, initiator address, the advertiser address, the CRC unit, which is important here because if you don't have this value, you cannot ca compute the, the CRC for, each, for every packet, and the op interval, which is a, a, a value that is used to uh, determine the uh, opening uh, frequency. So, uh, obviously, I was on the, uh, on the good start to sniff BID uh, connections, but uh, in fact, Python cannot do sniffing well on, with a micro bit because uh, micro Python introduces incompatible delays. Uh, it's it's uh, slow, uh, just to, to say it uh, simply. It's, it's slow. Uh, we have a, a few RAM available, so it's very difficult to get uh, to, to create or to develop a, a BID sniffer using this uh, micro Python stuff. So, but. Uh, this is not really a problem, uh, as we are going to see later. So I decided to implement some tools. So the first one was a mouse jack-like ESB sniffer, obviously, uh, since uh, I was in the uh, wireless keyboard and mice hijacking. So this uh, sniffer is able to dump 32 bytes payload, where the mouse jack original, original tool cannot. And uh, it supports ESB and legacy ESB, and also the BLE link layer are implemented uh, some kind of Bluetooth AD sniffing at the link layer just to be able to capture packets. Um, this is uh, quite new. Uh, it also in uh, introduces a uh, follow mode for ESB, but uh, this uh, mode is also present in the mouse jack tool. And uh, it can do a uh, worse sniffing. Uh, this is very useful when you are trying to debugging some uh, 2.4 gigahertz protocols. So this is uh, the system. Um, I tested my tool against my uh, wireless keyboard and, ma and mouse. So uh, again, I programmed my microbit to use uh, some kind of middleware I've, I've developed, and I start my sniffer, telling my sniffer to follow a specific device, uh, which is my uh, wireless keyboard. So you can discover these devices by using the same tool. And um, here, we, here we go. So we get uh, many packets, many acknowledgments, and uh, if I Type in with my keyboard, as you can see, you get uh, order packets. So the, this keyboard uh, sent encrypted frames, so this is uh, not sent in clear text. So this is good. But uh, if I take uh, an, a notepad, and if I type with uh, my uh, wireless keyboard, so you can see there, was a, a lot of, there were a lot of packets sent or exchanged between the wireless keyboard and dongle. So by doing this, we can uh, spy on wireless devices using the ESB protocol. Obviously, it was a sounds like a good, good idea to create a wireless keylogger using this uh, microbit. So I use the, the microbit uh, with the two uh, AAA batteries, and uh, I created the software. So it uses a UART interface to send the recorded keystroke, and the microbit uh, provides a tiny file system you can use to store uh, in memory, uh, in persistent memory, the data. So if you want to to get track of uh, every keystroke. Uh, 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 sniff by this device, so this is a, a good way to go. So I decided to plan my keylogger in, uh, in the meeting room we have at Digital Security. So I just pour it on. You can see the lead uh, doing some kind of uh, uh, searching for a wireless keyboard. And I asked uh, a colleague of mine to log into uh, an account using this wireless keyboard. So uh, he is currently logging in in, uh, in Outlook. I'm using my uh, vulnerable keyboard, so he's entering his password. There it goes. So uh, everything was uh, sniffed by uh, by this uh, keylogger, and when I get my keylogger back, I connect this uh, keylogger to my computer. So this is the raw stuff to get the, the keystrokes. Okay, so. Uh, just a little bit faster. So I press a button and here it is. I get all the, the keystrokes. So this is a, the password is a Henri Meunier in French uh, with a lead speak. So this is a. <laughs> so 
So it, it was done with a less than 200 lines of Python. The hard part was the HID, uh, HID uh, conversion for the, from the keystroke to, to the uh, characters. And uh, sounds uh, nice too to try to hack uh, into uh, some kind of wireless quadcopters, 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, based quadcopters. So uh, I saw uh, in, uh, in November 2016 that uh, Mark Newlin and uh, challenged Michael Osman and Dominic Spiel uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, during tour camp. Uh, so uh, the idea of, uh, came from Mark Newlin. He, he wanted to, to make some kind of duel, drone duel, uh, with, uh, against uh, Michael Osman. Uh, so they unboxed uh, two chairs on CX-10, and they tried to uh, hack the the, the other so JSON. So, uh, it was done with the micro, the Mosdak framework from Mark, Mark Newling. And, uh, I don't know what tools uh, used uh, Michael Osman, but, uh, I guess it's, uh, SDR based. And, uh, the result was the following. So, um, apparently it ended up with a draw and, uh, no phishing nets or hijacking whatsoever. So, uh, that was a good start. Dominic Spiel and Michael Osman uh, presented the CX-10 wireless protocol during the talk camp, so we got, I got all the stuff uh, already done. So this is a binding request sent by the uh, remote controller to the quadcopter, so basically it's, uh, uh, the controller sends a binding request containing its transmitter ID, and the, uh, the quadcopter answers back with a binding reply with a transmitter ID and a vehicle ID or aircraft ID, and uh, uh, followed by a confirmation. And then they start hopping from channel to channel, uh, sending uh, uh, from the controller all, all the information about the stick positions uh, from the controller. So uh, basically the throttle, your pitch, roll, and button state. And it does this uh, by looping on, uh, on uh, different channels. So my idea was to create a work controller uh, that would be able to take over a connect an existing connection and to take con control of the drone. So. Um, this can be done by sending a work packet uh, just before the uh, original, uh, original controller uh, does, and uh, by doing this, we can take uh, control of this. So the channel hopping mechanism is, uh, is ju just using four channels that are derived from the transmitter ID. So once you got the transmitter ID, you get the channels. So the, the, the hijack is uh, quite common. We sniff a valid packet from channel 3 to 18, which is the first range of the first channel used by this uh, drone. Once a, valid packet, uh, once a valid packet is found, we get the transmitter and vehicle ID. We check this uh, transmitter ID against the channel. We derive again the channel list and check if, we, if uh, uh, the channel we are currently listening on uh, is in this list. And if it's okay, we just synchronize with the, the drone and send quicker, uh, we send, we send, we send que packets quicker than the original remote and get control of this. So the GYDRO is set by uh, using a my MicroPython modded firmware, so this is the same. We wait for a valid packet, which starts with a 55 and index preamble. We get the transmitter ID, we derive the channels. And we check if the channel uh, we are listening on is in the channel list. If it's okay, if it's found in the channel list, then we start synchroni synchronizing with the, the drone and then send packet with the correct values to take control of the drone. But the fact is, I need uh, a way to fly, the, to pilot the, the drone. So I need a remote controller. I thought about using a classic RC. But no, this is a uh, way too way too complex. This is uh, using some kind of protocol. I also thought about um, using a USB compatible gamepad. Uh, we use uh, normally in the model RC, but uh, again, this was very complex. So I decided to go with uh, an existing remote controller for the from a CX10. So I modified my uh, remote controller, put some wires in it, uh, unsolder the original transmitter used in this uh, controller, and made my own work controller. So that's it. <laughs> With this controller, uh, we can, uh, I am able to read the stick values by using uh, the ADCs from the uh, 51A22. And uh, 
I won't perform any live demos. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we got some uh, insurance issues. They told me if I can put uh, some uh, some thread uh, to tie my uh, quad copter to a table. I did this at home and smash it to the ground. So no, obviously uh, I won't be able to do this. But I had, I got videos. So uh, this is uh, the first one. Uh, demonstrating uh, the hijacking process. So uh, I have I got a, a CX10. So it's uh, waiting for binding. Uh, I uh, perform this, bi this binding with a remote controller and uh, can control the drone with this remote. So this is uh, quite okay. And then I'm using my work transmitter. Well, basically this is not powered on, so it doesn't work. So I put power on it. Just check if the Original transmitter is disconnected, so here it is. I get the control of the of the drone, and I, uh, I'm going to use my uh, my work controller to to pilot the drone. So this is uh, quite interesting. <laughs> so this was a test bed I made on my desk, um, and uh, I made another video with, uh, showing uh, the real flight. So uh, this is uh, quite the same. I just start the quadcopter, put it on the floor, binding the quadcopter with the remote controller. So here it is. So I can fly the drone with, the, with this uh, uh, legit uh, remote controller. So I'm not a, a good uh, drone pilot, you know. So as I said. So here it is, and then I take my Right controller, power it on, power it, uh, power it on, sorry. Just, uh, oh, here it is. So I'm just checking that. Uh, normally when you do it, uh, when you do it uh, live, uh, you get some trouble with the quadcopter, but if it's uh, flying high, this, this is not really a problem. You can get the control uh, quickly. So here it is. And using my work controller, I was able to fly it uh, smoothly, well, almost. Uh, so it's working and uh, I can fly it. It's not uh, just a proof of concept. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I get the remote controller disconnected, but uh, and I also experienced some, some issues with the green version of this quadcopter. Uh, I ordered some on uh, Amazon and got it, uh, received them at home, and then when I tried this attack, uh, doesn't work, it did not work very well because uh, uh, the uh, stakes do not return the same values. So uh, this is a, a problem where you are trying to, to take control of this. So hopefully uh, everything is online now uh, as I'm speaking. So I put uh, everything, the tools, the firmware, and so on. It's available on GitHub. It's open source. Uh, if you have a micro bit, uh, feel free to use it and uh, test this uh, this firmware. If you find issues, or the bugs, or so on, uh, uh, file a pull request. And uh, you, you, if you test it, you will see that it's a child's play to to hack into some things. So as a conclusion, because I, I got to, to be very quick, uh, this is a cheap, tiny, and battery-powered radio frequency hacking tool. So this is uh, quite interesting. It uh, also allows rapid prototyping. If you are going to experiment some uh, ESB protocol, SB protocol, or BLE, you can do uh, uh, nice stuff with it. Uh, it's, um, it may be better than Basti's Mojack. I don't want to... Uh, to, to get uh, Mark nearly angry, you know. Uh, and uh, you can do even better with the Macrobits DIL, which is the device abstraction layer developed by the University of Lancaster. So this is a C++, not Python, so you have to, to get uh, uh, deeper in the, in the source code. But uh, I'm currently working on a, a, um, a start of implementation of Mike Ryan's hacking tool for BAD. Uh, so Mike Ryan's developed uh, so, uh, BAD sniffer based on the Ubertus uh, using uh, some SDR. And guess what? You can, uh, I'm quite sure you can do the same with uh, the microbit. I implemented the access address recovery, uh, the CRC recovery from this tool. It's still in development. I got no proof of concept to show you. But uh, if I connect my, uh, my uh, smartphone to a, a device, I am able to get all this value back. Uh, and the open interval too. So this, uh, this, it's just a matter of time to get it working with a, a, a real BAD device. So this is uh, just uh, some uh, future work uh, that comes with, uh, with all of this.
So if you have any questions, uh, I will be available out there, uh, wandering in the halls and, and rooms. And thank you.